Welcome into today's video where I'm going to build a new server. This is going to be based around the Threadripper Pro, the 5955WX from AMD, the Threadripper Pro. This is a 16 core, 32 thread monster CPU. And I'm going to be pairing this with the Asus. Ah, it's got some really silly name. I don't know why motherboard manufacturers can't just call this like the Pro Motherboard 2 or something, but this is the Asus Pro WS WRX 80E Dash Sage SE Wi Fi 2 Workstation Motherboard. There you go. This thing <laughs> is complete overkill. It weighs 17 pounds. It's, it's got seven individually bifurcatable 16x full bandwidth Gen 4 PCIe slots, three M.2 slots, uh, a couple of U.2 connectors, eight SATA ports, uh, a couple of extra auxiliary power connectors because this thing draws so much power. The chip I mean here draws, I think it's 250, 300 watts or something. So the CPU has an extra eight pin connector, but down the bottom, we've got a pair of extra six pin PCI connectors just for the PCIe slots because they can draw up to 75 watts each as well. So the reason I'm building a new server today, and you can look up here for the video where I actually built this Epic system about a year ago to the day. The reason I'm building a new server is because as far as I can tell, this old server has given up the ghost for absolutely no good reason. You can watch part one, which I'll link to in the description down below, I'm trying to figure out a little bit as to why that happened. But honestly, I'm sat here right now on the thick end of a, a very expensive shopping trip to Micro Center, trying to figure out why this thing doesn't work and I don't know and it's very frustrating but never one to waste a crisis I thought let's upgrade I like mucking around with hardware who doesn't I mean that's why we watch these videos right so uh, what we're going to do today is build this Threadripper Pro based system talk about this motherboard figure out whether the RAM in my old system is compatible with the RAM in the new one power supplies talk about bifurcation all that good stuff and we're also going to talk about custom power cable pinouts at some point as well. This is all going to be done in the Sliger CX4712 chassis that I used last year. I see no good reason to replace the case. The case at least works just fine or as intended. So let's take a deeper look at what might just be the nicest motherboard I think I've ever seen. This thing is completely bonkers. It's got seven 16x full bandwidth Gen 4 PCIe slots. It's got dual 10 gigabit ethernet. It's got a million USB ports. What else? The 10 gig ethernet that's on here is Intel 10 gig ethernet. For those of you running Linux, you'll understand why that's a big deal. It's also got Wi-Fi 6E because I think officially this is designed to be an HEDT system, a high end desktop tower. Maybe, anyway, it, this is an extended ATX board, so it's, it's, it's pretty big. It's also darned heavy. It weighs 17 pounds. I mean, literally picked up, oh. <laughs> I pick up the box and I'm like, what is in this thing? Even the sales associate at Micro Center said the same thing. Uh, it's also got three M.2 slots on the motherboard itself. So in addition to the seven slots that can all be bifurcated, in other words, each of these seven PCIe slots can be uh, sliced up into individually addressable 4X PCIe slots. In addition to that, you've also then got three uh, M.2 slots on the motherboard. In addition to that, you've got two U.2 ports on the motherboard itself. I mean, this thing is no joke, the most feature feature rich motherboard I've ever seen. I didn't even know that such a thing was made. So you can imagine my delight that, you know, my upgrade from the Epic chip to the Threadripper Pro has turned out such a wonderfully beautiful piece of hardware. Now, in the previous video, I detailed that I went to Charlotte to pick this up, which is, you know, two and a half, three hour drive from my house. The last thing I wanted to do was drive there and then drive back and find that some of these components were DOA. So I did what any reasonable nerd would do. I got a hotel room. Okay, we made a family trip out of it for a weekend. Then we went to Charlotte and the kids' museums and the, my four-year-old daughter loved it. But in the hotel room in the evening, I had a vintage evening reminding myself of being 21 all over again. We had Top Gear on the TV and I breadboarded this 
I breadboarded this system in my hotel room like a complete weirdo. I was building a PC or building a server, at least as far as to get it to post in my hotel room. Uh, I took this, <laughs> I took this computer to Charlotte in literally a luggage, like a piece of a, a big suitcase just to keep some of the stuff in here protected, like the RAM modules and all the rest of it. I figured it's going to be safer in a big metal box than it is even wrapped up in some of the stuff that I could put in the rucksack. So I'm driving there. So I just took the entire server. Um, getting it to post was no big deal, actually. I mean, installing the CPU was a bit of an ordeal. First of all, I've never installed anything into a socket as big as this. Look, look at the size of this thing compared to my hand. This is the size of a standard desktop socket cover. This is the size of the, is it SWPX8 or something? CPU slot socket that uh, the Threadripper Pro goes into. Look at the size difference. And then as if that wasn't enough, this thing comes with a torque wrench. You have to actually install this CPU with a torque wrench. Uh, there are three screws here, and you, you do them up in a specific order. They're numbered one, two, and three. So you have to undo them to get the socket out, and then you kind of slide the CPU in and out of the, the holder. It's still in, it comes in this like orange plastic tray, and then you slide it in and out of the socket, and then eventually you screw it down, and you have to use quite a bit of force to screw it down, because it's, it's quite a, it's a big chip, and they, with the LGA array that's in the middle there, they've got to make sure that it's an even pressure right the way across that huge surface area in order to get proper contact across the entire chip. So you have to put a lot of force in it, unfortunately, to get there. So once the CPU is installed, well, it's time to try and power it on, right? but I didn't want to carry a monitor all the way to Charlotte as well. It's not like it's in a big metal case like the system itself. It's a monitor, right? They're, they're quite delicate things. So why don't I use my brain? And I have an HDMI capture device here. This is just an Elgato CamLink 4K. And I also, for my KVM downstairs, have a VGA to HDMI adapter. This thing powers itself off a USB port and takes the VGA input that the motherboard spits out and outputs to an HDMI signal. So then with this coming out of the motherboard, which I should also add, this motherboard doesn't actually have an onboard VGA port. It comes with this. It has a little connector that plugs into the port on the bottom of the motherboard over here and a VGA output. So I daisy chained this whole, honestly, this whole cable mess like snake together. This plugs into the motherboard, this plugs into the HDMI VGA adapter, this plugs into a USB port on the motherboard for power, and then I need an actual HDMI cable to go from the HDMI output to the cam link, and then I've got the USB-C dongle adapter for the cam link going into my MacBook with OBS. So the only, only other thing that you need at that point is a keyboard. So I I kind of wondered actually why I didn't take like the Jet KVM or the Nano KVM or even a Pi KVM, to be honest. That would have been a much more pocket friendly solution, but then I would have needed networking. And I've got one of those GL iNet travel routers, but I don't know, I just didn't fancy it for some reason. So I went this route and I took a little USB keyboard that I got for free with one of these little Dell small form factor servers that I used back here for all sorts of shenanigans. The next thing I had to think about was power supply requirements. The Threadripper Pro is a bit more power hungry than the Epic chip that precedes it. So I've got a Seasonic Prime Gold 850 watt power supply in my old Epic system. But if I, if I ever wanted to do more stuff with local AI and, you know, the llamas and all that kind of stuff, 850 watts isn't going to cut even a modest, I, mean, I suppose it will cut a modest GPU. The A4000 that's in there is about 140 watts. It, it does just fine with that. But the Threadripper Pro can go up to sort of, I think it's 280 watts. And the version 2 of this motherboard unlocks things a little bit so you can even overclock further. So let's just, you know, budget in your head safety like 350 watts and then a graphics card at 160 and then you know i've got maybe up to 10 spinning three and a half inch hard drives about 10 nvme uh, pcie ssds 256 gigs of ram you know it starts to add up pretty quick and then let's let's say down the road hypothetically i decide i want a 3090 in there there's just no way so 
enter the Seasonic GX1200, a gold-rated power supply from one of my favorite brands in the, in the power supply space, Seasonic. So I paid $215 for the GX1200. It was down from 230 or something, I think. Uh, and I'm future-proof now, I think, for pretty much any eventuality that, you know, getting into self-hosted AIs or future... Like, I'm, I'm future-proof in terms of power supplies for this system now. At least, I sure hope so. Now, the only other thing that's probably worth thinking about is memory. In the old Epic 7402 system that I had, I was able to run a 3200 mega transfer per second Samsung memory that had ECC capabilities as well. Luckily for me, and this was a huge tipping point in the decision to actually go with the Threadripper platform, the 3200 mega transfer per second memory was compatible with the Threadripper Pro and indeed actually quite performant. Luckily I didn't have to step up to DDR5 or anything like that. So I think it's time to start ripping the old system to pieces and put the new guts in the new system. So it's time to pull out the power supply. Got to check the pins here because I don't know if you can quite see this, but I have a custom power cable here in the Sliger case for my 10 three and a half inch spinning hard drives that are in the front of this Sliger, was it CX4712 case. So when swapping power supplies, I came across a very interesting issue. Sorry about the fans ramping up and down. This is not a very happy system right now. But I've got a multimeter here, so what I'm going to do is measure the six pins coming out into this custom SATA cable, the SATA power cable that I have that powers all of the 10 three and a half inch drives at the front here. Hopefully, given that I'm staying within the same brand, it won't be too much of an issue. So what I'm going to do to measure the pins on my multimeter here, I'm going to look for the DC option with the sort of straight dotted line. In my case, that's just right at the top here. So in the middle of this connector right here, what I'm going to do is put the multimeter ground pin, the black one, right into the middle of the six pin connector. And then just measure the four pins that make up the perimeter of this connector. So the middle of this connector is ground. And then I'm just gonna go with the bottom left, 12 volts, you can probably just about make that out. The top right gives me three volts, 3.3. Then I've got 12 volts again at the bottom. And then the top is five volts. So what I need to do now is repeat that same test with the brand new power supply. So I'm gonna turn this off. And the new power supply came with this little doohickey. This is a Seasonic official doohickey. And this bridges the 24 pin power cable that comes with every power supply and allows me to kind of short it and do what the power button does inside of the system, except I can do it on the bench. So I'm gonna turn the power switch on on the back of the power supply and then connect up this override jumper. I heard the power supply click, but obviously it's under absolutely no load right now. So the fan isn't spinning. So I'm just gonna assume that it's turned on. So the middle of these six pin connectors is always ground, at least according to my very basic research over here into the Seasonic power supplies. So if I put the middle pin into the middle of the six pin connector right here, and then I can just test these four different bits around the edge. Doesn't matter that it's in a different output, I don't think, because I would imagine behind the scenes they're all connected back on the same rail and the same bus anyway. Um, so bottom right is five volts. And in terms of the clip, the clip would go there. So. Bottom right is five volts. Top right is 12 volts. Bottom left is 3.3. Top left is 12. And luckily the pinouts do match in this scenario between the Vertex power supply and the Seasonic Prime power supply. So I can reuse that custom cable from Carry On Cables just fine between the two units. So now it's just a case of pulling out the old Epic motherboard, the failed Supermicro motherboard, and replacing it with the new Asus one, right? So yeah, the uh, 
the giant motherboard doesn't fit in the CX4712, unfortunately. Since realizing that this motherboard just isn't gonna fit in this case, I did even try and move this fan wall back a bit because uh, there are two sets of holes on the bottom about two or three centimeters apart. Unfortunately, because a lot of these connections on the board here are sort of side loading, these connectors here for the mini SAS thing and the SATA connectors and all that, they would interfere with the fan wall more than I'm comfortable with. So this is the 4712 version of the case from Sliger, and I think it's about 25 inches in, in depth. They make a 4713 version that is 28 inches in depth, which should just give me that extra two or three inches that I need here for clearance for the cables and things like that. So hopefully, once I get to the front of the build queue, the Sliger team say it'll be another two or three weeks at least before the, uh, the new case arrives. Uh, we should be in business. In part two, part two, also part three, I'm going to focus more on the actual motherboard and do like a proper motherboard review, platform review type situation. I've ordered some more RAM for this thing, so there's gonna be half a terabyte of RAM. Uh, see what the bifurcation situation is on the PCIe slots in the BIOS, because at the moment, the only time this thing's actually powered up was in my hotel room in Charlotte. Um, so yeah, the, part two, I'm afraid, is ending with a bit of a damp squib because this isn't going to fit in there. I do need to get this thing up and running, though, so I'm, I'm going to just put this on a test bench type situation for a couple of weeks just so I can recover. You know, these, um, these SSDs here, for example, contain all of the app data for all of my containers. And I was giving a talk at scale at the weekend, just gone, uh, Southern California Linux Expo, and my keynote presentation was stored in Nextcloud, which normally isn't an issue. But I got to the airport to start working on the slides. Yes, yes, I know. I was working on the presentation on the plane on the way out there. Before I realized that Nextcloud was offline because the guts are on the table in front of me. So... I really do need to get this server back up and running, even if it's just, you know, sat on the desk in a breadboard fashion now. So part three will come, I think in about two or three weeks time. Um, Sliger's build queue is about two or three weeks and shipping and all that kind of stuff. Uh, some very exciting personal updates with my new studio build. Keep an eye on the channel for that coming up in the very near future. Uh, so I think for today, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for, kind of. Um, we did at least verify that the pinout of the custom carry-on cables cable that connects all of my uh, SATA hard drive power cables, we did at least verify that that is compatible between the, the Vertex power supply and the Prime Gold one that I had in there before. So that will do us for today, I think. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I've been Alex from KTZ Systems.